But there's also the NBA that's happening right now. And the NBA is actually going on. And that's why I needed my guy, Howard Beck, the senior NBA writer for The Ringer, to help me out to get the notes and news that I need because I'm going to, I hate to say it, put the NBA on a little bit of a hiatus only because NCAA is going to take away from the next couple of weeks. So, Howard, man, appreciate the time. Thanks for coming in, brother. Uh, The NBA right now, obviously, kind of takes a back, back seat to the NCAA tournament, but there is some stories, some storylines that are going on. And obviously I want to start right here because the best team in basketball right now is the Boston Celtics. They seem to be the team that everybody's saying they should be hoisting that trophy. I know like Denver is the reigning champion, but the way that the Boston Celtics have been constructed, they seem to be the best team right now that can threaten for that title. They they absolutely do, Kirk. Um, the Celtics have been on a roll all season. Right. And I feel like if if people are sleeping on them, and maybe like you, people will sleep <laughs> on them for the next couple of weeks while they're just watching right. college basketball, the NBA will still be there when you get back. It'll right. be all right. Adam Silver <laughs> might be a little bit alarmed at your, your framework. <laughs> it's okay. Um, the Celtics are... From the moment they added Drew Holiday and right. Chris Depp's Porzingis, and Porzingis has been banged up uh, often on this season, but... Everybody's believed, on paper at least, possibly best five, starting five in the league, possibly the best one through six in the league. And I don't think anything that's happened this season should dissuade us of that notion. And, you know, we always go into a season feeling like the defending champ unless something has befallen them. They lost a player, an injury happens. They're usually the benefit of the doubt team to win it again. This is one of those great years where we can look out at the West and say, you know what? It's really competitive. But the Nuggets are still the certain favorite in the West. But we've got this team looming in the East that not only is having a dominant season, they might be the only 60-plus win team in the NBA. Hell, they might get to 65. But they have the goods. They've got the requisite star power, the requisite scoring punch, and diversity of scoring options. They clearly have the requisite defense. They're a team that you can look at and say, I can't wait to see if, in fact, we get the – uh, matchup that we're expecting, Denver and Boston in the finals. I cannot wait to see how this plays out. And in part also because, look, the Celtics have been kind of lurking, looming, uh, threatening to be this team for the last several years. And we forget how young Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum still are. But they've been together for so long and have made the finals, they've made conference finals multiple times, that they almost feel like this team that people are suspicious of because they haven't broken through. And, uh, you know, they've never been more primed now to finally not only make the finals again, but potentially beat whoever it is across the way there uh, for the championship. You know, Howard, there's a couple questions here on this one, but I'll start with the first part because the NBA has done a great job with their play-in, right? The play-in, right? Seeds 7, 8, 9, and 10. It almost feels like we're going to focus the next couple weeks in the Western Conference, that play-in, 7, 8, 9, and 10 seeds, And maybe we are going to ignore what's been going on in Oklahoma City. This is a very young team, a very young roster. You watch them last night versus the Dallas Mavericks. They win again. Now they're the number one seed, obviously, in the Western Conference. Why are they this good? Are we ignoring this team? And do they have a legitimate shot at going deep in a playoff run being this young? Yeah, I mean, part of the reason we're fixated so much on the play, and especially this year in the last couple of years, is especially in the West, right? right. It, it could be the the Lakers and Warriors, Steph and LeBron, uh, sitting there uh, waiting for someone as, as a seventh and eighth seeds against perhaps very two very young uh, seeds at the top because it might be Oklahoma and Minnesota in those top seeds. Oklahoma, which hasn't been to the playoffs in four years and hasn't made it with this young group. Minnesota, which has made the playoffs but hasn't won a series yet. So There's this axiom, Kirk, in in the NBA, and I'm very much a believer in this, having covered the league for a long time. Generally speaking, youth does not win. Right. And generally speaking, you have to take your lumps. You make the playoffs, you get spanked by a more seasoned team, you come back the next year, maybe you win a round or two, and and there's a, a progression to this, usually, but not always. And the Thunder and the Timberwolves are both really interesting in that they feel like complete teams, and they have the requisite depth. They've got the requisite uh, combination of of scoring punch and uh, and defensive tenacity and, and some great individual defenders. 
on paper, there's no reason to believe that the Thunder or Wolves uh, are are just kind of there just to make an appearance and 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 you know gently step away to let <laughs> LeBron and, and Steph have the stage again. Um, but it will be one of the ultimate tests of this this age old NBA axiom about whether or not youth can win, especially when you go up against veterans. Because if it comes to pass that it's say Thunder and Wolves against Lakers and Warriors and whatever <laughs> combination that right. uh, might be. That's a phenomenal test, but I will just say, as the, the the last thought on this is, absolutely positively, this this is not some accident. The Thunder and the and the Wolves are legitimate. Um, all the youth aside, and all my belief in age old axioms aside, I do think both of these teams have great potential to make very deep playoff runs. And do they have enough to knock off the Nuggets in the end when that moment comes? That's the bigger question, but uh, these teams are absolutely legit and incredibly talented, and, and Shea Gildas-Alexander is an MVP candidate right now. Senior NBA writer for The Ringer, Howard Beck, joined the Rich Eisen Show, Kirk Morrison filling in for Rich. And look, I, I, I agree with you, and they're playing an exciting brand of basketball, watching the Thunder, especially watching Anthony Edwards, especially I'm here in Los Angeles, and that last little West Coast swing that he had playing against the Lakers, playing against the Clippers, you know, he, he shows he's one of the more dominant players in the NBA. But, man, it's hard to ignore the 7, 8, and 9, and 10 seeds. Phoenix, Los Angeles, Dallas, and the Warriors. The crazy part is, Howard, two of those teams weren't, aren't going to make the playoffs just because of the way that the play-in is going to be. Two of those teams will not be in the playoffs. If you had to guess right now, of those four teams currently, as it sits in the play-in tournament, who should be worried that they probably won't make it? Well, and just for mathematical purposes and, and just to make sure we're not overlooking anything, the Kings and Pelicans are on the bubble on there, the right? Bubble, so yeah. one of those two teams <laughs> could slip to the play-in and they could be the ones to to uh, to not make it also. I don't think that's going to happen. Right. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't even know how to handicap it right now, Kirk. I, know, I mean, I'm it's really to tough. It out, Listen, <laughs> like, I, I've, I have always said never bet against LeBron. Right. right. I would generally say never bet against Steph. I am loath to be betting against Kevin Durant, uh, especially when he's flaked by uh, Devin Booker and Bradley Beal in Phoenix. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a lot of veteran star power in that play in range that, to your point, may not make the playoffs. And the idea of a playoffs uh, bracket that doesn't include Durant or LeBron or Steph or, you know, two of the three of them is is just unfathomable right um but we may be seeing that sometime soon the team that i'm I, i'd be a little worried about right now in that group is actually dallas right um luca got banged up the other night we'll see how long he may be out uh they you know as, as good as they've been with him and Kyrie, uh they're a little inconsistent i don't know that they have enough defensively to really hang with some of these other teams and so, you know, the, the Mavericks are a team that I think are vulnerable. And the Suns, you know, their big three really hasn't played that much together since they brought them together a year ago and or or, or last summer. You know, right. Durant obviously first and, and then Beal. But, um, you know, injuries have disrupted their whole season and their ability to really establish that chemistry. And you see it sometimes show up in fourth quarters. They've been, I believe, statistically one of the worst or the worst fourth quarter teams in the league. And a lot of that has to do with, I think, the fact that it's a lot of my turn, your turn, when you've got these three big stars who haven't played together enough to get a feel for how to execute uh, sometimes. And and yes, all three of those guys can manufacture points um, out of nothing, but you don't want to rely on that possession after possession in important playoff games. And so the Suns, I think, are, are a team that's a little vulnerable in that regard. Just a couple, couple more minutes here with Howard Beck, the senior NBA writer for The Ringer. Um, you know, Howard, next couple weeks, obviously, I, I've said it before, look, the NBA will just kind of keep playing and keep trucking along. But obviously, we talked about the Boston Celtics, number one seed, obviously, in the East. What do the Milwaukee Bucks have to do over the next couple weeks for you? What do you want to see from them? Obviously, Doc Rivers now the head coach, and it started off slow, has gotten better. It looks to be they're a formidable opponent to maybe take down the Boston Celtics. But what do you want to see more of, or what haven't they done since they've Doc Rivers has taken over as head coach? It's nothing that they haven't done. I just think that the Bucks, from the moment they made the deal for Damian Lillard, they obviously traded uh, defense for offense and swapping out Drew Holiday for Damian Lillard, and they've lost some depth uh, over the course of the last year as well. And so their margin for error just isn't 
uh, very high. And the good news since Doc Rivers arrived, and yes, it was a little bumpy at the beginning, right. but they ha- seem to have really found a way to maximize the Lillard, Giannis combination. Those guys playing off of each other. They're, I think they're featuring that more. They've been able to establish a little bit better chemistry between the two of them and 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 leverage their respective talents um, to the max. And I don't think that that was happening before under Adrian Griffin. And so uh, I think the Bucks are a, a much more believable team as a contender now than they were a month, a month and a half ago. Uh, but, you know, we're still going to come down to are they good enough to beat Boston. And it's fascinating, Kirk, in the East, frankly, because the Celtics are such an obvious favorite in the East. Right. We're now down to saying, well, who's most likely to make the run to the conference finals to face them? And the fa- the fact is the Bucks have a very strong case. The Cavaliers have made a strong case for themselves over the course of this season, quietly having a, a really strong season despite a lot of injuries. The Knicks, if they can get healthy, are you know a decent bet to make a deep run. And the Sixers are sitting there looming, not just the Sixers are looming and sinking. I don't know if you can loom and sink simultaneously, (laughs) but uh, they're they're not in in a very good way right now without Joel Embiid. But if Embiid comes back, as I think they're expecting sometime, uh, you know, mid to late March or maybe by mid April, you know, no one quite knows. It's it's been kind of a bit of a, a mystery with Embiid's status. But if he's back and if they haven't sunk too far, you plug Embiid back into that lineup and the Sixers are going to be right back in this conversation as well. Last one for you, Howard is uh, I know we've got Nikola Jokic, you know, Joker fatigue when it comes to the MVP, but you mentioned already Shea Geologist Alexander's definitely put himself into that category. Anthony Edwards as well with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, how do you see this thing kind of playing out over the next couple of weeks? Cause this is a regular season award. How do you see this kind of going down the stretch for the NF- NBA's MVP? Once Embiid went down, I think uh, all the momentum swung to Jokic as mm. the, the clear-cut favorite. And I don't think anything that the Nuggets or Jokic have done uh, has has dampened that in any way, shape, or form. All due respect to Shea Gildas-Alexander, who's having an incredible season, uh, to Anthony Edwards, who's having a great season, to Jason Tatum, um, to you know any number of others. Kawhi right. Leonard mm-hmm. uh, has has got the Clippers back in, in, in the, the contention conversation in the West. But it, Jokic, the combination of just the the nightly production, the way he consistently elevates his teammates, the fact that the Nuggets are still one of the best teams in the league, and yes, the record matters. It's just going to be really hard, at least for me, to 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 talk me out of having Jokic at the top. Now that said, things do change sometimes down the stretch of a season, and I I never put any of this stuff in ink uh, too soon. And we've got a good month or so before ballots are even. Uh, going to be available to us so uh there's a really strong field as there always is but as of right now it feels like they're all jockeying for position two through five mm. as opposed to uh being in true contention for for number one but as i say there's still you know good uh, fifth of the season or so left we'll see what happens look i'll be watching a little bit of college basketball over the next couple of weeks i'll keep my eye on the nba but i'll also keep an eye on the Twitter page or the X page of Howard Beck. He's at Howard Beck on Twitter, formerly known as X or X formerly known as Twitter. That's what it is. Anyway, uh, senior NBA writer for The Ringer. Man, Howard, I appreciate the time, my brother. Talk to you soon. Thanks for having me, and it'll always be Twitter to me. Yes, there it is. That's another one. That's another We're going to take all the tallies. It's always going to be Twitter. Man, appreciate the time, Howard. (laughs) Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.